Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we will start again the major history compatibility complex few important thing we need to uh, know and this will uh, continue from last lecture also. So, we are going to discuss like what is the recognition of uh, MAC TCR. We are talking about different um, domain like um, polymorphism how it is related to interact with the TCR binding of the MAC part as well as the peptide part inside the um, MHC how it is interacting. So, this interaction I mean if you consider if you understand like MHC with peptide and TCR how they interact. So, we have a better picture now. Okay. So, what we can tell is that this antigen presenting when everything is perfect like a TCR is interacting with the MHC along with the peptide. You see in this cartoon which is very straightforward, not like before the crystal structure the MHC 1 alpha 1 and alpha 2 presenting antigen x here MHC a whatever you are seeing this is just to differentiate between two different MHC you see MHC a here MHC b here it is not uh, no relation with 1 and 2 all are MHC 1. So, this MHC 1 is present MHC a type MHC 1 is presenting x antigen and any particular T cell having a receptor like this is interacting both with MHC nicely as well as with the antigen. So, if this is the ideal condition for TCR and MHC antigen complex recognition, but if the MHC is different even the antigen is same the X, okay, but TCR if it can recognize X, but as it cannot recognize the MHC 1 or B type it there will be no interaction or no recognition. Same way if the this same MHC MHC A type MHC 1 presenting Y molecule because one type of MHC can present X, Y, Z different type they are not that restricted that we already know. In that case this TCR which can recognize antigen X will also not recognize. So, that means the MHC TCR recognition to antigen MHC complex is not either MHC or antigen independently they should be both antigen and MHC complex both should be recognized by particular T cell receptor. So, this is this phenomena is also known as MHC restriction. Okay. So, neither this case nor this case nor this case neither one will have any recognition and if there is no recognition the T cell will not do anything because this interaction strong interaction is very much important. If this interaction happen then only signal will go inside and give the cell response to do next job like proliferation producing different cytokines to activate um, B cells and uh, to get uh, sorry to have the, as this is MHC 1 to uh, be activated by the affected cells. So, that it can kill the cytotoxic uh, these cytotoxic T cells can kill the tumor cells or virus infected cells, but if this one is not. So, this phenomena again I am repeating is called MHC restriction. Okay. So, we mostly whole immune system in most of the immunology book if you find we are talking mostly about alpha and beta type of T cell receptor. Okay. Gamma and delta T cell receptor is not known as much as we know about the alpha and beta type. We know that it is there we know their function not much research has been done and not much is included in the book. So, in basic immunology concept development or the course also we have I mean we do not include the gamma delta receptor part that much, but few things we should remember or know that gamma delta chains or the gamma delta T cell receptor is not recognizing 
that normal MSC 1, MSC 2 presented cells. They have a very specific a different sets of uh, receptor uh, made um, antigen that they can. I will just give you one example here. There is a specific uh, receptor called this is um, specific ligand which is T 22. I can give you a series or table which is available in net or in book like okay, gamma delta receptor can recognize different type of alternative kind of receptor by which it is recognizing and this uh, x 1 uh, 1 2 3 4 5. So, there is no point of remembering all these names at this stage. If you are working or doing research on gamma delta receptor of T cells in future if you are interested then you will I mean have to know that like what is known what is not known and what you should do. But at this moment on the alpha beta receptor their concept the immune system is developed and you just for the information you should remember that gamma delta T cell receptor bears an alternative receptor that made up of the gamma delta chain that can recognize different kind of uh, antigens not the general antigen which is processed and presented by MSC 1 and MSC 2. So, so far just we told the MSC restriction that means, T cells should recognize the recept uh, MSC first and then the antigen, but what I did not tell that time I um, definitely I told you before that this MSC should be self MSC. Okay. Self MSC means my T cell receptor will recognize my MSC okay. that is how they can figure out which is self which is non self that is a kind of dress code like military code. So, whoever having that cap is Indian, whoever having that cap is from other country. So, seeing the cap or seeing the jersey, so MAC molecule is just like a jersey that we discussed also before to know from far okay, he is a, a my team member or member of other team okay, or the player of other team. So, MAC recognition is very very important. Okay. So, whatever antigen presented by my MHC, I am talking about my MHC, then only T cell receptor can recognize that. So, my T cell receptor will not recognize the antigen presented by somebody else's MHC until unless it is very same or similar. Okay. So, this is this kind of uh, training is very important when T cell developed, but even after that it was found that there is some alloreactive T cells which recognize non self MSC. How it is determined? It is determined because if this is true that my T cells cannot uh, particularly the cytotoxic T cells are more uh, important here. If cytotoxic T cells are not recognizing anybody else's MSC, then transplantation should not be a problem. Why we are typing MSC so much? Because if any organ from somebody else is transplanted to my body, T cell will not recognize them because MHC is different and if MHC is different then no immune reaction, but it does not happen. If tissue is not matched properly, if MHC is not matching properly or tissue typing is not good for whatever reason, the transplanted organ will be rejected by our body very short period. It is just like a regular immune reaction that will study a little bit more detail while we are discussing the trans uh, transplantation in the latter stage of this course. But for the for uh, at this moment if understand or believe me that if any organ even a small part of skin from somebody else it is transplanted on my body it will be rejected within 7 to 10 days. Okay. So, all cytotoxic T cell will be activated and eat it. So, if that statement like my T cell receptor can recognize only my MSC if it is 100 percent true then it should not happen. If I mean just to search that effect like why it is happening it was found that along with that self recognizing T cell receptor self MSC recognizing T cell receptor which we um, have or which you see along with that there are a another group of T cell receptor which is alloreactive. Alloreactive means which can recognize non self MSC molecule. 
that type of alloreactive T cell receptor are basically doing the rejection of the transplant organ or tissue. It varies from 1 to 10 percent depending on the individuals, okay, but they are not less abundant 10 percent is good enough. If you see the total number of T cell present in our body 10 percent is a good enough number or even 5 percent is a good enough number. So, these alloreactive T cells. So, while we are studying the MHC and the T cell recognition or interaction part at this moment we should remember along with self recognizing MHC we also have alloreactive T cell allo means can recognize some other allele of T cell uh, MHC which is not um, my cell alloreacting T cell recognizing non self MHC molecules. Generally the percentage varies it is between 1 to 10 percent depending on the individuals. Okay. This is one more information you should remember. Another important thing that T cell receptor responds super antigen. What is this super antigen? By name you can guess little bit antigen means which can induce the immune system or which can uh, immune system can recognize them and find them as foreign and there are antigen which is even more powerful called super antigen. Okay, what is the super antigen? I will show you the picture it will be clear very much. Okay. So, if you see this picture normally what happened this MHC 2 you can recognize by alpha beta and 2 chain alpha and beta domain presenting one antigen. So, this is normal feature. So, if T cell receptor can recognize it. So, in that case if you remember the MHC restriction what is going to happen this T cell receptor will recognize this part and also this part and this part to antigen. So, this can happen and this is very specific if you just go back or remember that MHC restriction slides where we show that MHCA where everything is perfect. So, interaction is there or recognition is there in one case MHC is not matching another case antigen is not matching. Okay. In both case it has no recognition, but here what will happen there are certain antigen which we call super antigen they do not need the presentation by MHC they are even smart enough okay, that is why they are super antigen. In case of bacterial super antigen you can understand from this slide like there are two type one is bacterial another is viral. So, so not all antigens from bacteria super antigen certain bacteria produce some protein which act as super antigen similarly some viral proteins are act like super antigen. Why they are called super antigen because they do not need to be processed and presented by MHC what they are doing they have some sequence which nicely interact with the alpha 1 domain with super antigen as well as beta chain which is a um, variable beta domain and this. So, this part without going to proper channel they can interact sidewise and these sidewise interaction what they are doing even antigen is not there suppose there is no peptide here this red is not there. Okay. If that red is not there if suppose there is no red here if there is no red here even after that it will interact with the MHC and T cell. Okay. They will bring them together and make a strong interaction cell like T cell or any other cell that we have in our cell they do not have any eye right they see only by each other they talk between each other they give signal to nearest cell or the neighboring cells by protein protein interaction only. So, as soon as this interaction happen as soon as this interaction happen T cell will re realize or think that uh, some antigen is presented and I am interacting okay. even there is no antigen this interaction may be there. So, this interaction 
in presence of antigen or in absence of antigen will bring MHC class 2 and T cell receptor together and T cell will think that enough uh, binding with enough strength is there. So, signal should go inside and they will be proliferated and that proliferation will increase the number. So, what you can understand? You can I mean you can guess you okay, I will tell the answer after discussing the viral one. You see the viral one is doing the same thing, but in case of viral one one more thing is there the viral one the viral antigen should be integrated this is one difference normally and here you see interaction between alpha of alpha chain of MHC and beta chain of T cell alpha chain of MHC and beta chain of T cell. In this case what happened both are beta. So, beta chain of T cell and beta chain of antigen presenting cell. So, if antigen presenting cell is infected with virus mostly dendritic cells happen they express the viral antigen which will bring the T cell even without any proper interaction in this case. So, both the cases whether either it is a virus or bacterial antigen both the cases T cell and MHC come together without or with proper interaction. So, if the proper interaction is there, so antigen recognition is there it will come automatically we do not need super antigen, but even if it is not there they will come closer and interact and signal will go to the T cell for proliferation. So, this kind of super antigen what they are doing it is a general inflammation kind of thing. So, whole um, T cell population wherever they will find interact that T cell non specifically will be get activated and proliferate. Okay. So, this this is and two examples are here I mean here one is uh, staphylococcal enterotoxin this one S E stands for staphylococcal enterotoxin and other one is toxic sub shock syndrome toxin and this is also staphylococcus aureus okay, also produced by the staphylococcal toxin. Okay, both the cases these two proteins can act as super antigen many viral protein can act as super antigen, but why how this evolution or this kind of uh, interaction uh, helps or uh, is in uh, negatively interact or they block the T cell and what is the effect of this uh, production of super antigen by this bacteria or virus is uh, not very clear in case of uh, pathology ok it is not known much, but this is a very common and this uh, the super antigen can cause uh, some general fever ok some because it will cause lot of different immune reaction and as a result we see some side expression like uh, we can feel fever or something can happen, but scientists are scientists as soon as they saw this the super antigen is have a general capability or capacity to um, activate the immune system in general the T cell will be activated they started thinking how can we exploit this property and do something that is where the knowledge of regular system like even in biology most of the wherever you say biotechnology kind of development or anything. So, biological system is doing something for their own survival for their own um, fitness to the uh, system okay, because they have to fit themselves best so that they can survive so many genome. So, but scientist or you all of you are welcome just whenever you see something any effect if you start thinking how you can use this for our day to day life may be medical may be something else ok. Not everything is uh, not all technologies are medical not everybody is uh, uh, helping the production of medicine or developing drug or developing vaccines ok. Something else also can be possible. So, there are many such example I am not going to go that. So, to do biotechnology this kind of information ok. So, this is the place of information like there are super antigen if I tell you what can be done there are super antigen uh, present 
So, in some bacteria also some viral protein are also acts as super antigen which induce the T cell population non specifically. So, the overall T cell population. So, how can be used? So, I am giving I mean I am telling you because it is already known this is used during immunization. What happened? People used to give the whole bacteria. Okay. So, if you inject a proper antigen for vaccination what will happen? That definitely it will go activate the immune system uh, produce some memory cells which will remember next time if the disease real disease happen that will protect us. That is a normal primary and secondary infection. So, during primary infection what we mix with the vaccine is that we will discuss when we will discuss the vaccine some material which that particular antigen which I want to raise the immunity or the interested particularly that antigen of interest is definitely there. Along with that if I mix some super antigen what will happen? If I mix some so pure antigen that I would like to raise the immunity against that definitely it will be there along with that little bit this super antigen molecule I just mix and inject. What will happen? Super antigen will activate the immune system suppose somebody's immune system is going down or not good or not very uh, effective to that antigen that will not we do not have to think about that because this super antigen will activate the T cell particularly the T helper cell you can see both of them are reacting with um, MHC 2 T helper cell will be activated. When all T helper cell will be activated whole immune system will be very uh, active and that among this all possible T helper cells some of them which is very specific to the antigen that I injected along with the super antigen that will also be activated. So, more uh, immune response against that antigen of interest will be much more right. So, that is the reason why we use the super antigen. So, that is a kind of information in immune system exploited in the regular technology like how we can very simple information, but someone thought and it worked nice and there are a lot of super antigen or super antigen type source we use during immunization or various immunization that is going on to induce the immune system as a whole at least for the first time. Remember, we do not use super antigen every booster dose. Okay. Booster dose I told in the last. So, first injection is a primary injection and then second one, second one injection is called first booster. So, first injection, then first booster, second booster, third booster, something like that. It is not the first one is the first booster. First one is the first administration of the antigen, second administration is the first booster. So, first administration time only we give this super antigen, but once it is already activated against that next time onward we do not use it. So, that is the process of immunization that in uh, one of the class when we will discuss what is vaccine how we can develop that time we will say again this word maybe a little bit more detail. Okay. So, the this is super antigen which is normally present or present in nature, but can be exploited for our own purpose for some development of vaccine or immunization process. Now, this is a kind of summary what we have discussed so far. Okay. There is no point of reading all this again it is written here, but as just to mention here if there is anything I missed also. The protein product of MHC class 1 and class 2 genes are highly polymorphic. I am sure you have no doubt about it right now. MHC polymorphism affects antigen recognition by T cell influencing both peptide binding and the contact between T cell receptor and MHC molecule which indicate that the uh, polymorphism given only change a different color in the binding cleft. Okay, MHC 1 and MHC 2 I showed you the alpha chain only. Okay. So, that uh, that part alloreactive T cells recognizing non self MHC are very adam abundant that we just showed. Okay. So, and we also told that this one is uh, responsible for rejection of the or transplant organ or host versus graft host versus graft rejection or reaction. Many T cells 
can respond super antigen that we just discussed. Okay. MEC polymorphism extend the range of antigen and which other system can respond. So, polymorphism importance of polymorphism. Okay. So, why this polymorphism evolved? What is the mechanism? Why not other genes? Many, many things could have happened, but this polymorphism how it is helpful that we already discussed because different kind of um, and peptide we can uh, MSC can fit into it. So, if you have multiple variety, multiple variety of peptide can be displayed. Polygenic which is not written here, polygeny is also important because I have say 200 different genes, if one gene does not work or by some infection or some ha something happen one or two genes somehow blocked my whole immune system will not be um, 0. So, still I will have many other copies of MSC. So, multiple copy of MSC gene also very important not written here, but it is um, we should remember. Okay. Now, the last thing is many proteins involved in antigen processing and presentation are encoded by genes within MHC. I am repeating again. Many protein genes involved in antigen processing and presentation are encoded by genes within MHC. This part we have not discussed yet. So, far whatever we are discussing, we are discussing about structure of MHC, how it looks, where is the difference between MSC 1 and MSC 2 hope all of everything you remember. So, when, when the question may come right in your exam in different form in the different form in different uh, national level test comparison is man or matching something some way or some other way it the question can come uh, what I mean how they are similar or how they are different. So, compare means both you have to tell similarity and dissimilarity and difference mean only dissimilarity that I am sure you know. And when MSC 1 and MSC 2 will be asked you have to tell both their structural similarity dissimilarity as well as functional similarity and dissimilarity including binding to C D 8 and C D 4 that MSC 1 binds to C D 8, MSC 2 binds to C D 4 it presents uh, the endogenous uh, antigen or peptide and it presents the external peptides or protein which is taken from outside. So, that we have already seen, but these all these should be there. Okay. But this last line which is uh, written in yellow the many proteins involved in antigen processing that we have not studied maybe in the next lecture we will start that we name is antigen processing. Okay. So, many proteins involved in antigen processing how they are located in MSC they are encoded within the MSC. So, let us see whatever gene we are told MSC 1 how they organize this is the gene organization of MSC genes. You remember that the um, bar diagram of different genes like their polymorphism is very high some are very low. So, these are the genes actually D p, D m, A means alpha and B means beta there are D q, D r okay, there are two different D r beta gene two copies and a and these are the class 2 you see here it is class 2. So, this is one class 2 d q d r ok. So, d p d o is also there one alpha is here and beta is here and if you see the m a c class 1 this is there are three genes a b and c polymorphism is there. So, in chromosome it looks like this, this is for human you see this is called H L A I am repeating again in human it is called human leukocyte antigen and in mouse it is called M H C. In mouse also they are different class 2 genes, but why we are saying that different antigen processing genes are in between because these genes L M P, TAP which responsible for antigen processing are present within this region. Okay. So, which you do not know now, but we will discuss what is this tab, what is this LMP, what is this tab BP, 
Okay. So, if you go the detailed chromosome map of human like human chromosome genome organization if you see this that was the cartoon and this is the same map we you, you can all these genes this all these are yellow here like d q d q d r d r b 3 d r a. So, all this yellow part is m a c 2 genes this is m a c class 2 which has this again tap 1 tap 2 clear this tap 1 tap 2 is very important some of you may know we will discuss again. M A C class 3 I will come later, M A C class 1 genes B, C and A is here. So, A, B and C there are some other genes G, F there are important, but not M A C class 1 if you remember the other which we did not discuss much. M A C class 3 genes are actually very tricky we do not have any M A C class 3 like M A C 1 and M A C 2 there is no M A C class 3, but there are many genes like you can see the complement genes are here which is uh, you are going to uh, learn very soon that complement genes okay, complement 4 and there are some cytokines like uh, TNF T 1 necrosis factor T n f which is a cytokine. So, these genes are present in between this M A C class 2 and class 1. Okay, there are very important gene which is required for M A C activation or G, uh, processing of antigen. So, these genes which helping this antigen processing or immune system and activated along with the MSC they are known as, but they are not MSC directly like MSC 1 and MSC 2 they are together all together they are called MSC class 3. Okay. It is again I am repeating MSC it is MSC class 3 is not like a specific type of protein like MSC 1 and 2 there is no relation with the presentation or T cell interaction. It is many proteins which involve in immune system cytokines complement and other proteins which activate the different process of antigen processing. So, these genes are known as M A C class 3. Okay. So, in next class we will see how the antigen process and antigen processing starts. Thank you very much.